Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the time may be. Welcome back to the channel, or for the first time if you're new around here, my name's James, aka Widowed, and today we're back for another release of Spoiler Season. This time we've only got one relic to look at, so it's going to be hard to comparatively analyse its worth, because we don't know what it's going to be up against yet. But, it's a spicy one. Some would say it's an upgrade from Fire Sale. Some would say it's a downgrade. In certain aspects, it has bits of both. So, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one yet. Really, it does depend what it's up against. Let's watch the trailer, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so we've got the Golden God. We don't know what tier this is yet. If I had to take a rough guess, I would say tier 3 because that's where Fire Cell was last year and this is kind of comparative to that. The earlier it comes, the better in my opinion. The later this comes, the less value it has. But let's see what it does here. You gain buffs to your high and low level alchemy spells. For a start, they have no level requirement or rune cost, so you don't need nature runes and you don't need level 56 or whatever it is for high level alchemy. You can just do that from whenever you unlock this ability, which is why I think it's better if it comes earlier in the first few tiers, because later on that no level requirement will mean less and less. So very early you will gain access to this, which could be incredible magic XP. Like you could be doing this at level 1 magic theoretically if it comes early enough. You could not level magic until like tier 3 or whatever and then just high arc your magic up in like 2 minutes to level 30. <laughs> So, anyway, no level requirement or rune cost, very good obviously, and the items themselves give 15% more gold and a 65% chance to not be consumed, which means that you're going to be making a lot more profit, plus the fact that you don't have nature rune costs, it's all profit, except for whatever the original cost of the item was. So as long as it alks for more than you paid for it, basically, you're making profit here. And when cast on a stack, the spell will auto-recast over time until the stack is depleted or moved around in the inventory. This means if you've got a stack of a thousand at little darts and you click on it, then it keeps casting. Even if you move your character, even if you attack something or put bones on an altar, it keeps casting high level alchemy as long as the item stack stays there. They've even confirmed, even if you switch spell books, as long as the item stack does not move, it keeps casting. That means you can cast high level alchemy on an item stack that's like 20,000 of something. And then you can switch to ancients and go and burst some dust devils or whatever you want to do. And it's gonna keep alking for the entire time that you're doing that. That's kind of nutty. So basically nothing interrupts this. As long as you don't move the stack or it runs out. Very cool to have. Very cool. Or, or log out. Log out timer still would work on it, I think. So you'd have to stay logged in for all that time, I guess. And like active. That's the main bulk of it. Is you get this auto alk. Which is actually pretty nice i'm warming on this the more i'm talking about it now the second part is that you gain a prayer buff you can pay twenty thousand coins to have the equivalent xp of a single dragon bone i don't know if this is going to work with the valamore prayer libation bowl but it could be a way to rush early prayer training if this does come early enough i'm kind of low-key hoping these are the tier two like in the tier twos and that tier 3 becomes transport, unless tier 3 is unlocked very, very early, because, like, this could be really good from launch, but the later you go into the game, the more this falls off. That being said, you'll have millions at the late game, and you'll be able to alt things like condensed gold for massive amounts of money, so you will basically have infinite prayer at the late game too. It just falls off 
Like, if you get this at, like, tier 5, it's pretty useless. Not useless, it's still good. It's still gonna have the same value, but it would have been way better if you get it at 2 or 3. Basically, the power of this depends on how early it comes. If it's early, uh, then I highly recommend it. If it's late, then it starts to fall off, and especially when you have to take into account what it's up against. Okay, the final little bit. Items purchased from select shops can be noted, provided the item can be noted at all. There'll be a new button to toggle this effect. They've said this is exactly the same as the fire sale shops last year, so if you could buy an item noted from a shop last year with fire sale now you can do it with golden gods so this isn't like just a few little shops here and there it's pretty much every shop in the game anything with a shop interface basically allows you to buy noted and of course there's infinite stock there so you can spam click to your heart's content as long as you have the cash supplies which i'm sure you will have with golden god so there's not that many effects here. You get the auto out, more cash from it, no level or rune requirement, chance not to consume the items, and 20k coins for a dragon bone. Effectively, the noted thing I guess is there too. What sort of items can we think about using with this? Well, thankfully, in the League's server, Make Next League Onion League, gave us this beautiful spreadsheet, which I've already sorted by the average profit. I guess return of investment might be a better thing to sort by. Let's go with that. Okay. So the best thing you can buy in the game to do profit-wise with this, return of investment, is ruby rings from Irksol in Zanaris Marketplace. Everyone can buy these, they'll have infinite stock, the change won't matter, so yeah, you can just get these. You need a diamond to get to this shop, like you have to use a diamond to get through this little gate here. I don't know if you can even see that because I'm covering it. There we go. This little gate here needs a diamond to get through it. So then you go up here and buy some ruby rings, I guess. I'm so confused by this table. If you buy something for 15 and alk it for 18, you get 42. How does 18 turn into 42? from 15%. I know there's the 65% chance to save it as well, but that doesn't seem like it'd give you that much extra. I mean, maybe it must be. It must be. This table must be correct. They've put it in, pinned it in, like, the official Discord, so... You can see there are a lot of items that are not profitable as well, because you lose them. I guess it does work both ways. That's just the extreme case of it, that it's making you that much. Alright, let's look at some other examples, though. Although that is... That seems like the go-to because it's it's relatively cheap at only 1k each and if you can get roughly 3k out of each ruby ring then that's just sick like there's no reason not to do that everyone has access to this shop you need one diamond to get to it okay that's easy to get you can get a diamond anywhere and then just walk through buy as many ruby rings as you want and never come back here i don't see any reason i mean the rest of this list is Nice, sure, maybe you don't want to have to spam click that many times because you can only buy five at a time, but like, yeah, the, there's nothing on this list that's going to beat the ruby ring because everyone has access to it, like none of the rest of this, for, at least for the early game I guess I'm looking at, if you want to look at average profit here, condensed gold, however, would make you a lot, it's a less return of investment because you're spending a lot in the first place but you are making roughly 5 mil per cast for the cost of 104 mil into 110, basically. So the later in the game you get, especially with the Stonecut Spires and Keldegrim Stone Mason, this is incredibly good. Definitely a favour on this relic for having these two shops. And then if you want to look at the low end of things, I don't know if it's worth really looking in the table. A Karambwanji, you catch these things fast as hell, right? So this is just an example if you go in for the uh, Animal Wrangler, you'll be able to get these so quick in the early game. Yeah, fishing level of 5, so you'll be able to get that like 2 minutes into the game, right? You catch shit tons of them at a time. They're useful because you'll need them for Karam 1 fishing later. And you can get a humongous stack really quickly. They out for 11 coins each. That's times by 1.15. And then it has a 65% chance to be saved. I don't know how you math that in. I guess times 1.65 might be the right way. So we're getting like 21 GP per Karambwan G, and you'll catch these like 10 a tick because you're fishing quicker as well with the harpoon. 
So that's one way you could make use of this in the early game. You could quite easily get a very, very massive stack so that you can just leave it all, all walking on this. Another way you could do it with the other tier one relics that we saw, you could just do it with arrow shafts from the lumberjack one. You, you could just alk arrow shafts, though they don't have an alk value, so you won't make any money this way, but you will still get a decent amount of magic XP out of it. You just won't make any money. So, you know, it's, it's a bit, bit of a trade-off there. You could do with ores i guess or just metals or whatever you make from your your smithing but yeah i really think that karam wanji is kind of a maybe a cheat so i'm not sure there's anything you could afk mining wise to get a big stack like karam wanji i can't think of anything and then arrow shafts are the only thing i can think of for the other one or just logs i guess i guess you could just make logs right you could just get noted logs and then arc them because that'd be fairly quick like you don't need to bank or anything do you so you just sit at a tree for like 10 minutes and then go to the bank and draw the node stack and you'd have let's say we're doing oak logs they alk for 12 coins each it's not bad willow log 24 coins yeah you're getting better the higher you go up just off basic logs it's not bad there's definitely some money to make here you compare that maybe to i don't know iron's probably the quickest thing to power mine isn't it so if we look at Iron bars, I guess, because it also make them into bars. Unless it auto makes them into steel, in which case even better. Iron bars, 16. What about iron ore? Worth less, yeah. Steel bar, 60. There's, there's definitely some margins to be made here. It's a powerful tool. It really does just depend what it's up against. That's the main factor when figuring out how powerful these are, is what is the trade-off cost, because we can't really evaluate the value until we know the cost. But yeah, cool one to know about. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Could be extremely powerful. Could be underwhelming, depending on its opponent or opponents. Let me know what you think in the comments, of course, and leave a like on the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to stay tuned for all my leagues updates. Gonna have plenty of news coming, plenty more guides coming. I've got a huge area guide planned. I'm gonna be doing routes for each of the tier one relics independently. So you'll have a route no matter which one you're picking. And yeah, plenty more stuff on the way, of course, with my own leagues content coming when it finally does start. Make sure you stick around for that. And if you want to support even further, we do have channel memberships available now. With all that being said, look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. I'll see you on the next one.